Yesterday, Donald Trump became the first U.S. president to be convicted of a crime, having been found guilty on 34 counts in New York State Court. How will this affect his ability to hold the job of president of the United States? That's hard to say. There are no rules against it. More broadly, though, how does being found guilty of a crime affect one's ability to be employed? A recent study explored that question. It's called Criminal Record Stigma in the Labor Markets for College Graduates, a mixed method study uh, published just this spring. A number of other studies have focused on this question in regard to low-wage jobs, but this study took a slightly different angle, focusing specifically on jobs that require a bachelor's degree. Uh, some of the types of jobs were administration coordinator, director in marketing, sales, business development, etc., etc. The study also looked at the function of race and ethnicity. So what they did is they sent out about 1,800 applications to jobs uh, in California, uh, and a third of each of those 1,800 had white-sounding names, Hispanic-sounding names, and black-sounding names. Interestingly, the study didn't actually say what the names that they used were, but examples of it, like from the classic Bertrand study in 2004, used Jamal Jones, for example, as a black-sounding name, and Emily Walsh as a white-sounding name. The first question they asked is, does having a record affect your likelihood of getting a callback on a job? And the answer is yes. You can see that having no record and a bachelor's degree, about 7% of the applicants got callbacks. Meanwhile, uh, with a record, whether it was before attaining one's bachelor's degree or afterward, it was cut basically in half, more like 4%. They also split the data according to race and ethnicity, as you can see here. There's a number of different ways of looking at this data. I want to look at a, a couple different things. If first we ignore the question about having a, a record or not, this data shows that having a white name resulted in significantly more callbacks, like 11% compared to a Hispanic-sounding name. Meanwhile, a black-sounding name was down like 3.5%. This data is not that different from the classic Bertrand study from 20 years ago. Now, if we look at the question of whether or not having a record affects callbacks, we can see that significantly for white people it does. Also significantly uh, for Hispanic people it does. For black people, it's a little bit different. I think that it doesn't show any effect here, clearly, mostly because there are already such low levels of callbacks for black people without a record. This data is sobering in a number of ways. It shows that in the last 20 years, we haven't made a lot of progress using the same methodology. It also showed significant stigma against formerly incarcerated individuals. Here are the applicants who had been rehabilitated and went on to get their education still suffered from that stigma.